Big Noon Kickoff presents Bear Bets. I'm your host, Chris Flika. Jeff Schwartz is my co-host as usual, Sammy P. Will Hill. will join us shortly for the gambling group chat. Big Noon Kickoff in College Park, Maryland this week. Michigan at Maryland. Wolverine's a big, big favorite there. Two weeks left of the regular season, man. It, it is a uh, it's flown fly. We got this week. We got next week. Then we got conference championship Saturday. And then it's Sunday. The, the playoff field will be revealed. Then we get, then we get the beauty of bowl season where we get opt outs and <laughs> ridiculous line moves and results that we would never at teams. We never, ever, ever would want to bet on during the regular season, laying ridiculous amount of points with teams that tank the ball. So much fun to look forward to over the month of December. Uh, Where's the chaos at, Bear? I want the chaos. As long as it doesn't involve Oregon, I want the chaos. There's been 100 games this year where the top 15, preseason top 15 teams have been a favorite of 10 or more. 98 and 2 straight up. There have not been upsets this season. I want some chaos on my life. Again, not, not with the Ducks. Everyone else. I want chaos everywhere else except Oregon. I, I need some of that in my life for college football. Thank you, Bud Elliott, for that number, right? Yes, but yeah, Bud Elliott did a great job with that, yeah. Well, the Ducks could be one of your chaos teams as a double-digit favorite over the next couple yeah, of we'll weeks. Yeah, we'll get to that in a few minutes, buddy. That, we'll, that might, uh, we'll get to that in a few minutes. That, that might fall. Yeah, obviously, it, Arbaugh stuff out there. Jimbo Jimbo Fisher finally fired at A&M, by the way. Yes. Who, who do you have for that job that you can give us some inform, information? On? It's not Dan Lanning. I know that. It's not going to be Dan not Lanning. Caleb DeBoer. I, I don't think it's going to be one of these obvious guys. I, I think they're going to go to go to a, a an up tempo, offensive kind of guy, Ooh. good recruiter. I mean, that. they, that's in this NIL, and they got more money than anybody to to pay a coach, pay their pay their recruits, uh, their, their NIL, whatever you want to call it, the NIL collective. No, no, no one pays recruits. No, it's, it's name no, image and likeness. Correct. What? Okay. What? Yeah. Is this a good job? I think it's a good job because it's one of the schools that realistically you have the resources to be able to compete for a conference and national and a college football playoff berth. Can they beat Alabama, Georgia, LSU, now Texas, Oklahoma coming in? Like, can they, can they have a year where they're better than all those? I think they probably could. But uh, I, I think the job has always been deemed a little bit better than actually maybe what it might be. There's also a lot of hands in the cookie jar, right? There's a lot of boosters. A ton of hands. And, you know, like, you know, everyone says, you know, obviously they, they mock either a Phil Knight or like a T. Boone Pickens. But, you know, those are one booster. It's easy to deal with one guy sort of controlling it. A&M has all these guys that's that been, are controlling. That's been the problem and, in Texas, too. Yeah, and, and that's a problem with not just – it's a lot of places. And so you have to find a coach that can kind of – live up to the expectations of, of every single booster. So I do agree with you. I, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like it's going to be Lincoln Riley, Oklahoma, USC thing where it's like out of nowhere, USC hired Lincoln Riley. It does feel like A&M is not going to go the route that we think. It's they not going to be Mike Elko. Yeah. Like, no, I don't, one I, of those, one of those guys like, either. No. It, it does feel like behind the scenes, maybe there's a little bit of uh Oh wow. This guy was hired by A&M. Right. So I'm looking forward to seeing who that is, but I'm looking forward to seeing your picks this week. We have a lot of them. We'll get through them at a good pace, Bear. You ready yes. to talk about your picks for the week? Well, two-minute drill. Let's start with, no, we're not going that fast. Not that fast. Let's start with <clears throat> Tulane at Florida Atlantic. The line is Florida Atlantic is getting nine and a half points here. The total is 47. Tulane's nine and one overall. They lost all the way back in week two to Old Miss, have not lost since then, but they're only three and seven against the spread while playing a conference schedule that hasn't challenged them too much. FAU is four and six overall, and against the spread bear where we're going here for you rather plus the nine and a half yeah. like Tulane only has that one loss without Michael Pratt uh, it all missed but they found themselves in games nearly every week <laughs> four straight one score games uh, Memphis the Memphis game required to come back to the ultimate one by double digits as well maybe it'll ultimately catch up with them maybe it won't because they're just too talented but this is a tricky spot I mean Tom Herman's team has been terrible the last couple of weeks um but Tulane has the UTSA game next week, which yep. is a massive look ahead game. game. Yep. Pay attention, look at spot. We have, it's going to have AAC title game implications. If you look at Tom Herman, though, his history uh, as an underdog against ranked team against ranked teams, yep. fourteen four and one against the number going back to his Houston days. All four games that he was an underdog in the AAC, they won outright. So, like again, this is not a great FAU team. This is not a good team compared to what he had. Uh, in, in the past at Houston, but playing close to double digits here, maybe you want to buy it up to 10 to get the 10. You could do that, but I took uh, I took the house. 
This is a week all over college football where there's look-aheads because obviously the final week of the season typically is rivalry week or when you, you end up playing the best of your conference. So it's a good spot here. Also worth noting, FAU's defense is 46 in points per drive. So they're playing defense at a good pace against the Tulane team. Obviously, they can score. But at home, with a look-ahead to UTSA, it's, it's a lot of points, well, plus nine and a half. Let's get to the desert next. My Ducks, Oregon, at Arizona State. Arizona State is getting 24 points. That means the Ducks are favored by 24 uh, opened a little a little bit bigger. It's gone very high. Total 54 and a half. Low total for that number there. Oregon's 9-1 overall. They're 7-2-1 against the spread. They just beat USC by nine in a game that I don't know if anyone was awake for when the final play happened. Arizona State 7-3. Just beat uh, UCLA in a grinded out win in the in the Rose Bowl. Sun Devils are 4-5-1 against the spread bear. What do you got here? As you know, Jeff Schwartz. Don't mention it. Well, I'm not gonna, no, I'm not going to mention that game. You mentioned the other games. We I'm going to mention Arizona. since 2013, <laughs> five times a ranked Oregon team has gone to the Does state it? of Arizona. Four times they have left a loser. Yeah, it's a terrible place. Including three yeah. times as a double-digit favorite. Yeah. 2019, they were number six, died in one. Arizona State was five and five. They lost to the 13 and a half point favorite. Um, they did blow out Arizona in Tucson last year. But this is this feels like way too many points. Uh, you, you take away the one game in Utah where... Arizona State had all the quarterback issues, and it was just a complete debacle. A week after Oregon yeah. went into Salt Lake and blew out, blew out the Utes. Like, you got the, the Civil War next week. You've got the Pac-12 title game. A lot of times when you meet in the college football playoff era, like, you see yourself outside the top four. You kind of press a little bit at times, looking to maybe make yeah. that statement. ASU's played pretty well since the end of September outside, of, like I said, against that game. I, I, 24, I'm taking the points here. Yeah, it's a good wager. Um, one thing I'm going to miss about the old conferences after this year mm -hmm. is sort of this scar tissue of knowing, like, Oregon has not played well in Arizona for years. <laughs> I played I played in Arizona three times. Mm -hmm. We played well at Arizona State, but I've lost a quarterback at Arizona and then lost a quarterback at Arizona again. Like, in two two straight years, I left there without my starting quarterback. Um, you mentioned it, 2019, Jaden Daniels, young Jaden Daniels, beat Oregon in the exact same game yep. we, we, before the Civil War. Yep. This Oregon team is much different. I'm not worried about us losing this game at all, but I think this is a 31 to 10 game. That that's I wrote for Fox Sports. Uh, it just Arizona State's defense only allowed 30 points or more twice this season. Like they play good defense, mm -hmm. they're a solid unit, but offensively they're not going to be able to keep up. Like that's the thing. It's like can they keep it away from Oregon? They can't do the same thing against UCLA where they run the swinging gate stuff. Like to me, it's 31 10, 31 13, something like that. Oregon gets over 30 for the the the, the 11 straight time this season but they don't cover this game. I, I cannot see this being a blowout. I really don't see it being a blowout. I don't either. Yeah, so uh, we'll we'll stay in the Pac-12 for your next wager. Washington at Oregon State. Oregon State's favored by two and a half. The total is 63 and a half. Final Pac-12 game at Research Stadium. They, they have to call the fire department to see if they can get more fans in the stadium <laughs> this weekend. Washington's 10 and 0, ranked fifth in the country. They've only covered four games this season. Oregon State is eight and two overall. They're six to four against the spread. Bear, what do we got here? But you know, since 2021, Oregon State 17 and one at home. They've covered all but one game. Pac-12 games, 11 and one straight up. Perfect 12 and 0 against the number. Yeah. Obviously, the one loss against SC a couple of years ago. Doesn't it feel like everyone is on Oregon State here, though? They are. And, and, and I went back and looked. It's like people again. This is just a little a, a note trend a historical note that i find interesting it's not a handicap for the game but people like will ask me questions like this like i did earlier this week i think, I think yes yes. They, yes this is exactly <laughs> it since 1978 there have been 11 instances where you've had a top five team as an underdog away from home with against a team with at least two losses those 11 teams the top five yeah. teams went two and nine yeah uh, six of nine losses were by at least 14 points the last time it happened was 2010 when Auburn, eventual national champion, was 11-0 in Tuscaloosa, four-point dog. Bama got out to the big lead. Auburn came back, won yep. the game, um, and, and got the win. So you got UW is a two-and-a-half-point dog at Oregon State. I took Washington. I, they they, they kind of remind me, for lack of a better word, a little bit of what TCU did last year. Yes. Defense wasn't good. Found a way to win games. Oh, by the way, they both wear, wear purple as well. So they do, yeah. Clearly, I mean, it's unfortunate, yeah. Content, it's a, it's a bad color. content creators here looking for uh, <laughs> from 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 more great similarities. But 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 I, I do think Washington has a little bit of a 
Team of Destiny. The, the disrespect and just things are yeah. falling into place for them. Yeah. It will be a great Cinderella story for Oregon State to spoil their undefeated season in their final Pac-12 home game. Yeah. But I, I don't know. I've so Washington's interesting team, right? Like last weekend against Utah, the second half they allowed zero points. They've actually allowed seven points over the fourth quarter and fourth quarters the last uh, four games, which is, which is ridiculous because the rest of the time they allowed a ton of points. And there's no actual rhyme or reason why. This I was happens. just going to say, is this some uh, an adjustment or is it just well, like so? So the Utah the game, factor. Utah came out the first five plays of the second half. I'm not going to rattle it through you guys, but it was just Utah making errors on their own. Guy falling down, bad pass. Even the interception that was unfortunately fumbled before the goal line, like which by the way, that would have sunk any other team, right? And then Washington just gets a safety immediately afterwards, right? Um, so they they are making itself, they're making, but like on that play, Utah had a four string tight end and ran sort of a bad route. Ball gets tipped up in the air, interception. Washington doing enough to win. The 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 Oregon State home road thing is fascinating to me. Uh, this season they're five and zero at home, average scoring margin of forty to twelve point eight on the road this year. They're three and two. Average scoring margin of 35, basically 36 points to 28 points. They allow so many more points on the road than at home. But the thing about their home schedule the last three years, Bear, they played nobody good mm -hmm. except Oregon last year. That was the only game they played in the last three years with was a team that can actually beat them at home. On the road this year, they played Arizona. They played Washington. Uh, so excuse me, Washington State. The teams that can throw the ball against them have hurt them this year. I don't think they have an answer for Washington's passing game. Like I, I just don't. So I don't think they I, do either. And I think no one does. That's why Washington keeps winning football games. Oh, where's Roma Dunes at? Okay, let's throw it to him. <laughs> I mean, Michael Penn's a good quarterback. I'm not knocking that. But I just don't. I think Washington feels like a team. It's not a great handicap, but just team that they keep having things go right for them. Sometimes, sometimes that's, that's part of the, football. People, people hate that type of, but sometimes that is the handicap. And that my handicap is Washington just keeps having things go right. And we'll talk more about this game a lot mm -hmm. in, in the game, the group chat. I'll bring up some other stats about team of destiny for Washington. Let's go to an ugly one in the big 10, sir. Illinois is at Iowa. Iowa is a three point favorite. The total is 30 and a half right now. I might've gone down since I wrote this down an hour ago. Illinois is five and five. They've only covered two of their ten games. They've won their last two games after they played a bye. They're playing better football. Ill, uh, excuse me, Iowa eight and two overall, five four one against the spread. Quick beef of mine: Why is Iowa ranked like fifteenth? That's a great quick. You, you talk about. Getting? I mean, there's nothing about Iowa that says they should be ranked that high. They're not good. They've beaten nobody. Like the Penn State game. The Penn State's the best team they played, and it was an absolute embarrassment. Last four games. 21, 22, 17, and 22 total points. Five straight, 12 of 15 games under. It's only two games of the only those 15 have seen 40 total points. Like you cannot make the total low enough. I took Illinois plus the points here. I mean, you'll, you'll, Iowa can't score, like we said. Illinois' last four games have been decided by three, four, one, and three. It feels like an auto play uh, on the dog. Uh, Poor one out for Troy Taylor, the Iowa punter, his final game. I saw. Kinnick, very dynamic. Uh, Iowa's best player, playmaker. Uh, could probably run for office in that state and he'd win. And also, obviously, Brian Ferentz's first final game. Kinnick, I'm sure he's got a uh, an offensive explosion planned, at, planned, planned out for, uh, for, the, for the Hawkeye faithful here. Luke Altmaier back at quarterback for Illinois here. Uh, I thought, took the points in the line. Yeah, I don't know how you don't take the points every time Iowa plays football. And the big the Big Ten West just take points, right? It's just easy to do, especially with the total that low. It's ridiculous. Uh, let's get to your to another game you have. We've got two more here before we get to the gambling group chat. Uh Temple on the road at the uh the, the fighting Trent Dilfords. Uh the UAB is favored by seven and a half, the total of 64 and a half. Temple is uh seven and three over excuse me, three and seven overall, and it gets a spread. They're one and one in the last two games. UAB is also three and seven. But they're five and five against the spread. Uh, who are you taking here? I can't imagine someone wanting to lay points with the UAB. So that probably means the Blazers will win, win easily. I catch my UAB win total under, which I'm happy oh, about. Shocker that that didn't work out. Hasn't worked out so well. Yeah, I, I imagine that. But I, I know they've got a couple of high high scoring wins over USF and FSU. But the defense has been so bad this year, and, and I think EJ Warner and those wide receivers. I think they can make plays. Yeah. So I, I took the points in the in, in Temple here. I know, I know they haven't very been very good on the road, uh, but at the same time, I just think the matchup here yeah. gives their offense a chance to succeed. 
I don't have much to add other than I do root for like a Trent Dilford sideline explosion because he has some of those that are pretty. Yeah, you, that's usually like there's usually a minus sign in front of that that prop every week that it will yeah, that will happen. It will happen. Yeah. It's, kind of, it's kind of like where we yeah. are with like like Jokic in the in, in the in the NBA. We'll go Jokic to have a double double tonight minus seven thousand. <laughs> like, yeah. like yeah, you're like yes. Will Will Draymond Green choke someone out tonight? Yeah, it's, yeah minus. It's getting yeah. to. Will, will he be ejected? It's getting to slight the, slight dog slight, slight dog. <laughs> <laughs> that guy. Different part for that for that discussion. One more here, Bear. Back to the Big Ten. Nebraska at Wisconsin. Wisconsin is favored by four and a half. Total is a low total as usual in the, in the Big Ten West, 37. Uh, both teams fighting for a bowl berth in this one. They're both uh, five and five on the season, covering four of their 10 games. Basically identical teams. Where are you going here? They're identical teams with the exception of one thing. Nebraska just does not like to hold on to the football. Uh, it, They've turned it over 27 times this year. They've got four games with at least four turnovers. It doesn't matter who the quarterback's been lately. It, it just doesn't matter. And, and I know Wisconsin is boring and predictable, but at least I think they can capitalize on the turnovers in the short fields when inevitably the, the Huskers turn the ball, turn the ball over. It's amazing that, I mean, it's hard for me to wrap my head around how far Wisconsin is falling. They haven't lost four games in a row since 2008 so and that's what is at yeah. stake here i mean that's not the reason why i like them here but but i, I man i i hate myself for for betting two big 10 west games like this <laughs> iowa nebraska do, i mean iowa think- illinois and wisconsin nebraska and unlike the previous yeah. game i'm gonna lay the points here with, 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 with wisconsin I, I just nebraska on the road yeah. and turn the turn the it, it just it's not a good combination so i i laid four and a half for wisconsin because i think the Huskers might even be a little bit of a uh, a publicish dog side here because Wisconsin has fallen so far. Do you think Wisconsin would be this bad this year? No, no, no. I mean, some of it I think obviously the has coach. to do has to do with yeah. I mean Mordecai getting hurt and and you're kind of implementing a new a new offense. But I I did not think that they would be this this need, basically needing win here to uh, to get ball eligible at the end of the year. Well, let's recap Bears wagers so far. We'll get to gambling group chat next, and we also have our best bet to the end of the show. So Bear has uh, Tulane, excuse me, FAU plus nine and a half. You have Oregon, uh, Arizona State plus 24. I'm trying to put words in my mouth. I know, I know. Washington plus two and a half. Uh, you have Illinois plus the three. Temple plus seven and a half. Nebraska minus. No. No. Oh, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Oh, geez, I can't even read it. You right are now. I'm trying to read. Jeez, Wisconsin. I even I even wrote right here. Let's put a check mark next I, to I think I think that says there. that you like Nebraska. No, no Wisconsin that's, that's minus what, four. I'm not going to walk a set in that game. Wisconsin minus four and a half. I put checks next to your picks and I still got them. You can't even read. I can't even read. Maybe it's that green pen. Here's the green pen, the, the, the Oregon green. Well, let's get to Gamma Goop Chat. We talk college football playoff rankings. We talk Heisman rankings. We talk. Did, you, did Jim Harbaugh die or was he suspended? We'll do all that next. Gambling Group Chat. It's me, Bear, Sammy, and Will Hill. Gambling Group Chat is back. Myself, Jeff, Sammy P, Will Hill. And I guess we just start at the, at the I was going to say the top, but it's really Michigan is no longer the top, no longer one of the college football playoff rankings. But Michigan laying a big number on the road against Maryland. As of the time we're doing this, we don't know the status of the of the hearing, the appeal, the, with, with the injunction, whatever you want to call it, uh, with, with Harbaugh, like, the, after what we saw last week, that was when I was having this conversation with some people. Did you come away more impressed or less impressed uh, with, with Michigan? Well, well, I guess I'll start with you. Oh, is there an option C? To me, that was sort of, I think we were texting about this, like the most predictable no, game. Option the most one, predictable option two. There's, there's no option two. <laughs> more impressed, I mean, less impressed. It's not, it's not, don't, don't get wishy-washy on me. I'll go 51-49 more impressed. I mean, that was exactly what we expected. Penn State can't move the ball. They get conservative. They make odd decisions in terms of when to go for it, when not to. They're really non-competitive again against a, a you know, a major team. Um, I think Sammy, you texted us like right away. Oh, nice, cute little 19 yard field goal by Penn state. I mean, it's just, it, it's the same game we've seen for years now with Penn state. So it's, this is what we saw Michigan just kind of toying with them running the ball the entire second half. So, um, you know, we, we kind of got, what we expected it wasn't under, it was, it was a pretty easy under, but I mean, this is just what we get with Penn state. We've come to expect it. The field goal on fourth and two or fourth and three was the dumbest thing possible and i know people say well hindsight's 2020 no you got maybe the best team in the country on the ropes at home potentially you can go up seven nothing that building is going to explode 
and Dr. Glasses decides to kick the field goal and like the building went dead because, you know, you go up three, nothing, then Michigan comes right down the field, right down your throat scores. And then all the momentum goes away. It was just such a bad decision at that time. And, you know, people will say, well, you got to take the points there. Well, clearly the points didn't matter. You need seven there because it changes the whole complexion of the game. And, you know, I think a lot of things could be true, Bear. I don't, I think I would go option C too, unfortunately, because Michigan still might not have played a really good team all season, but Michigan still hasn't like had to show you anything. They didn't have to throw the ball in the second half because they knew Penn State couldn't move the football. So it's a weird situation. I still have Michigan as the highest power rated team, but I feel no confidence in like laying three points with Michigan against Oregon if they were to meet or laying you know, three and a half against Georgia, just because the power rating says it's real doesn't mean like you would lay the points with Michigan against a very, very good team. I was impressed because they played well with Harbaugh dying, right? He died, right? That's the yes, one. Like after, clearly. She, she yeah, was, like after she after the game, was, yeah. I listened to all the press. It looks like he, he's dead. So that, I mean, it was an impressive performance considering their coach had passed away right before the game. Uh, they look like the same Michigan team we saw all season. And, you know, the, the Harbaugh suspension was so it's such a half and half, right? Like you get to coach all week, prepare the team all week, recruit all week, but then for three hours on Saturday, when everything's already planned, you don't show up, right? I mean, it, it doesn't. To me, that was Michigan. It was the exact same team that would have played if Harbaugh was physically on the sidelines. Instead of sitting in the bus or wherever he was in the hotel, like to me, that was that's Michigan, right? Exactly who we thought they would be. Um, yeah, they ran the ball in the second half because they could, but also they probably didn't want to make a, make a mistake with their quarterback, right? Because the worst thing that would have happened is McCarthy throwing an interception in the second half. So they said, you know what? Screw it. We're going to run the football. We don't really trust our quarterback to not make a mistake, and we're going to get out there with a win. Like I, I don't really think my opinion of Michigan has changed whatsoever. And if Harbaugh's back this weekend, okay, he's back. He's still there all week. He's still game playing. So preparing this team, he just won't be there Saturday. So to me, it was like a half suspension. Doesn't really count very much for how I feel about Michigan. Yeah, I, I came away a little less impressed. Like, like it, what you saw in the first half, like their tackles were turnstiles. The right tackle was I mean, bad. Ch yeah. Chop was getting in there, and, and I know Penn State didn't necessarily think very highly of their their tackles either. Like we'll we'll see if Ohio State can expose that. But but you but yet yeah, Sammy, you're both right. Like. How little regard did you have for Penn State's offense? Just say, okay, we don't need to throw. We're not going to throw a ball in the second half. Like we, we don't need to. They, they, they're not going to move the ball. So, I don't know. And, and, and look, Jim Harbaugh got suspended early in the year for like lying about recruiting a couple of years ago, right? Yes, cheeseburger. He also got suspended now because their program is cheating and there is this plan on light out of sign stealing and in a, in a legal way violating NCAA rules like that, that that's been out there too right how the hell do they turn this into like them being the victim here and this like, so, like it is amazing your coach got suspended earlier in the year he suspended again now because the head of the program this was going on under yeah. his like how are people like feeling sorry for them? Oh no, poor Mich and, and then I see a headline this morning like, oh, it will be terrible if Michigan doesn't have its head coach on the sideline to win their thousandth pro program game. Like, what? Well, Stop. I I I, I, I say this a lot, but it comes up obviously right now. I, I think the, the best superpower the athletes have is creating this sense of me against the world, right? We're the underdog. Everyone hates us. And they're doing that right now, right? They're, that's exactly what they're doing. Most of us. 90% of us that have no affiliation to Michigan or Ohio State or the Big Ten, I will actually have affiliation, I guess, come come July or August. But no one cares. I don't, I don't really care, Bear. I don't care what the outcome of Michigan is. I, I, It doesn't bother me. I'm not rooting against Michigan or for Michigan. And so a lot of us are like, yeah, like the overreaction, I feel, is, is typical for football players. This is the way they respond in, in times of adversity. It's me against the world. No one believes in us. Screw everyone else. Bet. Bet was the, the word of the day on Saturday as, as everyone tweeted that out or Friday, mm -hmm. whenever it was. And that's what athletes do. So to me, it's nothing abnormal. Um, the Harbaugh, Michigan, America's team thing was... <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's what it is. But uh, this is what athletes always do. It's they, they create this narrative of, of, of everyone hates us. Yeah, and, and I, I don't know. If they're super definitely involved. underdogs, though, because they're, they're definitely underdogs because they're going to be favored against Ohio State for the first time in a long time. Yeah. So, yeah, they're definitely the <laughs> underdog. Uh, exactly. Bear, also, if you need me to cry at the end of the show like the interim coach, I will do that for you, okay?
<laughs> Sharon Moore just I really like more too. He's gonna be head oh, coach. Oh, abs- he's yeah, absolutely going to be a head coach. Yeah, somewhere. Sure. Yeah. I, 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 wonder, I wonder if maybe maybe just uh, they're playing in, in College Park, maybe, and, and the and the Ravens play on Thursday. Maybe we can get John to come down on Saturday and be on the Ooh. on the Michigan sideline. Maybe there will be a Harbaugh on the sideline. By the way, that, that game next week, Sammy alluded to with Ohio State. I, I'm not going to get involved in this Michigan Maryland game, at least live or at least pregame. Maybe live something will pop up, but. Ohio State laying a big number to Minnesota. Eight of the last nine years, Buckeyes have failed to cover the week before Michigan, and you're laying a huge number against a terrible team. Obviously, Marvin Harrison's final home game as well. So, uh, be interesting to see what happens there with uh, the Buckeyes and the Golden Gophers. Uh, but the team that is down now number one in the uh, college football playoff, Georgia. Why do I get a feeling Tennessee might be the right side here, Will? Oh. Uh, it, it's just the way your brain works where you, you have an ability to erase what you saw last week. Cause that's what you have to do. If you sat there and watched Tennessee and you watch Georgia, there, there's no way one team can compete with the other, but look, it's sports, it's football, especially, you know, the NFL, we talk about this all the time. You just have to uh, sort of have amnesia and, and completely erase what you just saw because Georgia it's ticking up. They looked the part. The offense finally looks good. Bowers is back. Who knows how healthy he is, but the quarterback's gotten his feet under him. Um, it's a big number. Um, maybe, maybe this is a look ahead spot here for Georgia. Maybe, you know, I, I don't know if player props are up yet. I'd be interested in the Bowers under in terms of receiving yards, just because I figure he's probably still on a pitch count. Who knows if he's still hundred percent healthy. Mm-hmm. I'd be afraid to leave this. Now I'm not afraid to take some of these, you know, ugly dogs, but I'm afraid to here to take Tennessee. I, you can have the, the, the balls here. I'm not taking them. <laughs> Sammy, any thoughts on uh, on Georgia Tennessee? I, I, I guess I guess what Willard said is like the reason why. Yeah, the back to back Ole Miss back to and, and Missouri consecutive weeks. You kind of prove your point last week that you are the best team in the country. You're getting healthier now, but we, we, we we've seen t- Tennessee kind of kind of play well. But but I, I guess the amazing thing is like the note that's out there. I think the number now is this year like. Uh, Top 10 teams that are double digit favorites are like 70 and two straight up or something like that. So we have not had that season defining upset yet. I mean, last year, Tennessee got one at Neyland, beating Alabama for the first time in forever. But it does seem like a tall task, but I just don't know if I want to lay double digits here with the dogs. It sounds like, Bear, you're saying we should maybe like money line parlay Georgia, Michigan. We should just money line parlay all the favorites, get our little content influencer crown on and just parlay all of them. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, guys. I mean, I let me let me first say that I took the dog last week with Ole Miss and I felt really good. Like the start of the second quarter, I'm thinking to myself, ooh, Ole Miss might win out right. And then at halftime, I go, yep, I'm dead. That's how quick Georgia switches. And, you know, Georgia and Alabama both. I think, you know, the the SEC was not impressive in the non-conference. But those two teams, I mean, who's gotten better over the course of the season more than, you know, Georgia and Alabama? We could have the conversation about Oregon. Oregon's gotten progressively better, especially since the Washington game. But Georgia is not the same team that it was in early September. Alabama is not the same team that it was in September. So I, I see it. I mean, the numbers say to take Tennessee, at least from a power rating standpoint, because Georgia on a neutral should probably be like a 10, 11 point favorite. The Georgia tax is real. People bet Georgia, people parlay Georgia, people do all kinds of stuff with Georgia. I still wouldn't take Tennessee. I I feel like that thing could get away from them in a hurry. And Georgia has what Clark Kellogg calls spurtability. Georgia could be down three and then they're up 17 in an eye blink. And that's the scariest part about betting against Georgia as they've gotten better over the course of the season. I don't have any action in this game, but my, my one thought is what's different between last year and this year, right? Just the games at home, I guess. Otherwise, I don't know why the result will be any different than we saw last that season. Game it was, the, was ugly last year. It was a 14 point Georgia oh, win. Oh, obviously. And, it, it and, and it wasn't that close. And it wasn't that close. Like, I don't know what the difference is this year, I mean, Tennessee's offense is not as good. Their defense is much better. But as we've just said for the last four minutes, I mean, Georgia looks the part now. There's, they've gotten healthier. Obviously, Beck is getting in, in more of a rhythm now. They just have sort of figured out the flow of, of what they want to be. Bowers is back, and, and incredibly, he's up for the best offensive-defense alignment award uh, somehow. He's a, as a tight end who's played half his games this <laughs> season. Congratulations to him. 
to, to be a finalist for the Lombardi Award. Um, but I don't know what difference there's going to be between this year and last year's result other than this game is played in Tennessee. And I don't think Georgia is going to be intimidated by that in, in the second half of this game when they pull away. I mean, you know, it's, uh, you go back and look, they've only played two true road games. They had, they had the comeback at Auburn where they won by seven and then the, the, the sleepwalk game against Vandy where they're favored by a million and wind up winning by 17. So I don't, uh, I don't know if I can get there taking Tennessee, but I, I certainly wouldn't feel good laying the, the double digits. But I, I think the, the game of the week clearly is the game in Corvallis, final Pac-12 home game for Oregon State, the Beavers. And again, th th this one opened up Washington favorite, and you've got to, find, you've got to search long and hard for someone uh, – to like Washington in this game. And I, I, I think I'm one of those people who, who, who does like uh, the, the Huskies this week. Uh, I, I, just, I just don't know if Oregon State has the offense to be able to match them point for point. I don't think defensively they, may, they match up great with what Washington can do uh, offensively. I know they've been unbelievable at home the last couple of years. I think it's, what, 17 and 18 yeah, or 18 and 19. And the one loss was the – the, the field goal loss to SC. So, so I, I took the two and a half with, with, with UW here as it, as it crossed over and went the other way. I don't think we're going to get a three. You could buy it up to three. I, I, like, I like the Huskies, and I, I know Will is, is itching right now, jumping out of his seat to tell me why I'm wrong. Remember what happened two well, weeks ago? You disagreed not, with yeah, me in, in, in 55-3 later. This does not, we don't need to say the score. I mean, I know the score. Chelsea, can yes, you edit that part out? That was mean to, to name the score like that. That was not necessary. <laughs> I like Oregon State. I took them on the money line. So, hey, Oregon State wins by a point or two. We're both happy. I just think they're going to run the ball down yeah. Utah's throat. I think they can piece stops together at home with the crowd noise, maybe get some pressure. This will be an interesting live betting opportunity because Oregon State can't afford to fall behind and get into a game where they're, you know, throwing the ball here. But uh, as long as they can keep it within one score, I think they can run the ball. Like you said, that's an impossible place to win. Washington's been dying to get B here. I think the Beavers do it. So my buddy, Goodfellow, we'll call him Goodfellow just because, you know, he's in witness protection. He's out West. He's very good at the Pac-12, and he's with Will. He laid the so this one is not right the bar. This is not the bartender. This no, is not this the bartender. This is the guy who's outstanding at betting the Pac-12. He's, he's one of the best. He's, he's on Oregon State minus one. And it's hard to go against him. Clearly, the market has agreed with him. The wise guys laid one, one and a half, and now we're two, two and a half. I am so scared, though, of, of like betting against Penix. And, and clearly, I've got the Penix Heisman ticket, which I think is going to go down the toilet eventually when they lose to Oregon eventually. Um, I like the total, though. I mean, over seems fair. Like, I, I think the total should be in the high 60s. Like, I think this could very easily end up in the 70s. Both teams are going to score. I think Will's point about Oregon State running the ball is very valid. They are very good at, at getting those big chunk plays at the line of scrimmage. This opened, you know, in the mid-60s, and now we're like 63 and a half, 64. I still like over. I think we're in for a shootout here. So we talked about this game a little bit earlier, Bear. I'm going to add to my discussion here about why I think Washington is sort of a team of destiny at the moment. You could also make the, the case that this is a game where they're going to collapse down. So here's here's the numbers, guys. You ready? This is a 10-0 football team who's played in, in possibly the best conference in the country this season. You ready? Defensive stats. 102nd on third down. 112th in havoc rate. 123rd in tackle success rate. 131st in sacks per dropback. And 97th in passing plays over 20-plus yards. I, I, they keep winning. You've I don't been, know, man. You've been they, waiting they, to do this they, all morning. You've been won, waiting to say this all morning. They've won 17 straight so games. So excited. 17 straight games. They've won eight of those by eight points or less. I, I don't know, man. Like, I, you, we keep picking against them sometimes, and all they do is keep winning football games. So is it just a team of destiny this season, which I thought since the Arizona State game where they won a game with, without scoring off at the touchdown? Or is, is this the game where they eventually kind of all this catches up to them on the road against the Beavers? I, I don't really know... The Beavers are good, not great, in my opinion. Um, they do some things well. Other things, they they do okay. Like I, I don't know if they're going to keep up. At any point in this game, in every Washington game, there's the third and 10. Oh, Roma Dunze is down there. Let's throw him the ball. I don't know. There's no defense to stop that. So I'm rolling with Washington here because I think this is sort of their season, at least for now. And uh, they're going to be the first Pac-12 team uh, to go undefeated in conference play. I, I don't think they're going to lose this game. Oh, wait. You... Uh... That Pac-12 championship game, which appears it will be Washington, Oregon, 
It was a look ahead line that I, I actually played last night. I, I grabbed UW plus seven. Like, I, I think we all think Oregon's better, and they became away from that regular season meeting thinking Oregon was better. And if they played in the Pac 12 championship, Oregon would win. But, but seven, seven Three seems points. like a lot of points. And, and I know alumni pessimism to my left here is super worried about this game. But that aside, like, you got to take Washington plus the seven. And I think. If, if for those if for those who think that the one the winning quarterback of that game is going to win the Heisman Trophy, like you get a better number on UW money line than you would if you're betting Penix to win the Heisman Trophy right now. I think so. Like I, I would just wait wait on that or, or take the the plus money on UW and the money line in the Pac-12 title game opposed to what what, what one eighty five or whatever he is right now to win the Heisman. Because like if we do think the the ultimate winner is is going to come from that game, like. That might be the way to play it. But if you think Washington's going to lose this weekend, then the Penix Heisman odds is probably done, right? I mean, if they lose this game, is well, he going to lose this weekend? Is he win the Heisman? I'm offering a counterpart, right? If, 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 they, if they lose this weekend and then lose to Oregon, they're not, Penix not winning the Heisman, right? But if they're in the Pac 12 championship game 12 and 0, who does? There's still a chance then. Well, it would be Knicks then, wouldn't it? Well, why, or Jaden Daniels. I, I, I think Jaden Daniels is the best quarterback in college football right now. He may not win the award, um, but we have had winners who have won the Heisman with three losses before you have. And, and I, I said, I said that, I mean, his numbers right now are better than what Tebow and RG three had than in, in their three loss seasons. And it's right there with what Lamar had yeah. when they had three losses going into the, into the, the championship week. And I, I know, I know Sammy, you're, you, you're holding the panics ticket. And I mean, do, do you see the, can you at least see the path? For, for Daniels, and I don't know if I'd play him right now at plus 350 or whatever it is, because uh, I, I do understand, like, it, it feels like maybe he is a little bit of a placeholder for that for that Penix uh, Knicks winner. You can at least see the path and understand the argument why people would back Daniels, though, right? Yeah, you can make a case for the four horsemen, for any of them, really. I mean, the two quarterbacks out west, Daniels in the south, and then Marvin Harrison. I mean, let's not ignore that. It's funny. I thought that ticket was dead when we first did our first college football show. And I was like, yo, bet Marvin Harrison at 25 to one. He's right there too. I mean, some books have him like four or five to one to win it. Um, there's a world where Marvin Harrison is live. Let's just say Marvin Harrison has a couple touchdowns going into the fourth quarter against Michigan in the big game. And he makes this insane one-handed grab in the end zone over two guys to seal an Ohio state win on the road in Ann Arbor. Marvin Harrison could win this thing. Now, you're going to need some things to fall your way. You're going to need probably Oregon to lose again, Washington to lose again. But Harrison's in the conversation, too. And if they can crack this Michigan defense that nobody has cracked and Harrison goes off, let's say he gets like, you know, 10 catches for a buck 70 and two or three touchdowns and they beat Michigan, he could win the Heisman, too. I know it's a quarterback award, but there's something to be said about having that big moment against a good team. And I don't think Daniels' track down the stretch is going to matter. I mean, they play Delaware, North, East, Southwest State this week. Nobody cares. Nobody's going to watch it. And then they play AM, who just is not that good. So I, I feel like the stage is bigger for the other three, and Daniels is going to put up big numbers. But LSU is just not good on defense, which which plays into Daniels having bigger numbers because, you know, the defense is just awful. So these games are – are back and forth. I don't think Daniels is more valuable than the other three, but anybody could win it at this point in time. I, I think you had Delaware, Northeastern, Southern State last week against Tarleton oh. Tech of, of West Georgia <laughs> last week, right? They didn't cover. I, I, I do like I do like the Harrison angle because that game will be the most watched game possibly in college football history of tracking number. I mean, how many people are going to watch the, 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 oh, it's it's going to be be the biggest game. I mean, and if they win that game as an, as an underdog, because Marvin Harrison has done such a good job and looks like the best player on the field with a bunch of NFL football players. I, I do. It does feel like, and I've, I don't have a Heisman vote. I haven't talked to many Heisman voters that, you know, there's not a guy that people are passionate about right now. Right. And if Marvin Harrison has that, game and then they go to the big 10 championship game and they play an iowa team who's good on defense he has another big game like that it does feel like he could easily take this over because you know i, I don't know if people are excited about michael Penix as heisman or bo nix as heisman i think there's some excitement with jane downs because of what he did last weekend but if a guy like marvin harrison can capture the attention of everyone watching for two weeks in a row he certainly can still win this award will 
you're good with this stuff, Bear. When's the last time we went into the Heisman Saturday with like actual drama, with actual suspense of like we really don't know who's going to win the award? Usually the, you know, the favorite's like minus five million, and we, we pretty much know who's going to win. I don't think that'll be the case this year. I think we go into Saturday with some actual suspense, with some actual drama, really not knowing who's going to win. It'd be tough for Harrison to get there. I would think he'd need like three touchdowns. Maybe one of them is a game winner. I, I can't totally rule Harrison out, but look, you could make a case for Daniels. You can make a case for the two Pac-12 guys. Um, yeah, really, with Daniels, what we're talking about is the third loss. If he had two losses, this would be his to lose. It's the third loss that doesn't sit well with people. I think from a betting perspective, uh, should we be playing LSU team total over this week? I know it's like 51 and a half or something, so you're going to need eight touchdowns, but if you're Brian Kelly, look, you lost to Florida State, you lost to Bama, uh, you can salvage something from this season, maybe by getting your guy the Heisman and running up the score and getting 60-something points. That that might be the betting angle here, but to me, uh, completely wide open. Yeah, that, that, that'll that be interesting to see if, if LSU does leave him in against an inferior team to, ju to just post stats and what effect that might have in, in the voting. Yeah, I guess you got to go back maybe to – Maybe Derrick Henry. I'm just looking through the winners right now. Like they, there was, that, that was the Christian McCaffrey year where a lot of people thought McCaffrey should have won in 15 and, and Henry wound up winning. Deshaun had a great year in 15 as well. That would probably be the year, but, but you're right. It, it seems like recently we, we've, we, we've known going into, into that, into that vote who ultimately is going to win. You're snickering, Chad. Well, I'm just, I know LSU played Florida State, but there are three other non conference games uh, Grambling, Army, and uh, Georgia, what's his Georgia State this weekend? Georgia State. M must be nice. Must be nice to have the, those, those three games to pad your stats there. And they've also played road games against Ole Miss, Missouri, well, and Alabama, which well, no, the, the Dallas Turner absolutely the, 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 the conference games are obviously the conference games, but like the non conference schedule for a, for a lot of SEC teams just makes me chuckle a lot. Oh no! And then you got this is this is the um, this is the week. This is the week. And, and actually, and actually, I remember on, on a few years back, I went back and did some research on this. Like Florida was the first team to do this, and I'm going to have to share this with Urban when when I see him this week. And like Florida, one year and one early in Urban's tenure, like I, I don't know if there was a movement to get that Florida State game pushed back or changed or. So like I guess Flo or like wanted an idle week and they couldn't do it. So Florida like separated like a game where like just threw in Stetson or whomever it was Stetson. the week before Florida yeah. state. And then ultimately all these other sec schools yeah. fo followed, followed too. So urban was a trend scatter uh, scheduling wise. I mentioned Florida state. Now they, they have nobody this week. They have North Alabama and, and that before the, before the game with the Gators uh, next week. And, and I mentioned that number that you're going to have Florida state as a double digit favorite next week and have Oregon as a double digit favorite next week. You got, the Ducks is a big favorite this week as well. Like we're kind of just still waiting for that big upset. Like in looking at the at the at the rankings, like there was this big to do this week about should Florida State be four, should Washington be four? And, and and I get it, the argument both ways. I put Florida State fourth just because I think they're better, even though their resume may not be as good. But like if you look at, at the numbers. And I reached out to Chris Andrews at South Point for 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 like potential lines of teams played. And, and Sammy, I'm sure your numbers will probably be somewhat close to this. He had Florida State Washington as a pick. So really there's no wrong answer. He's got Oregon minus four against Florida State. He's got Texas minus one against Florida State and Bama minus four against Florida State. So that's telling you that the committee doesn't necessarily have what people view as the best four teams. One, two, three, four. Because he's got three teams behind Florida State right now that he would make favorite over the Null. So it, it, it seems like a lot of people next week are probably going to be rooting for the for the, for the Nulls to go down to the Gators and go down to Louisville on the ACC championship game to give uh, them a chance. Because I, I think Florida, that, what that tells you is if Florida State does lose, they're the they are the 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 riskiest of the one of the of the undefeateds of missing the playoff. Uh, with one loss, I don't think they're getting in, but. Where where do you see this whole Florida State Washington deal, Sammy? Yeah, I got a pick too. I got them both at one nineteen. So I agree with Chris. No surprise there. Uh, you mentioned what was it one? Yeah, I got Texas one on Washington, and then you know for those or on Florida State for that matter. And then for those looking for like a rocky road for Florida State, there really isn't one. I mean, even if they play Louisville at the end, and it looks like it's going to be that way, 
I've got Florida State eight and a half, nine on Louisville. So Florida State probably goes undefeated. I mean, there's really not a real scary spot for them. I guess we could say that they could lose to Florida. And obviously you could lose at the ACC championship, but they're going to be double-digit favorites the rest of the way. And they're probably undefeated, Bear, at which point, you know, we're going to have chaos. You know, we've talked about this basically every week. You could potentially have a one-loss Michigan, a one-loss Ohio State. If Bama beats Georgia, they both have one loss. Texas has a loss. Florida State has no losses. Good luck. And then, obviously, Oregon. You know, Oregon beats Washington. Those teams have one loss. I mean, you could have six really good teams with one loss. You could. And then undefeated Florida State. Good luck. Yeah. I, here's the thing, though. If Florida State wins all their games, they're a playoff team. Yeah. Like, I, I just it, It's that simple, right? We might not like the way that they win their games, or we may not think they're as good as someone else, but if you go undefeated in a Power 5 conference, you definitely deserve to be in the playoff. Like, this obviously feels like a year where a 12-team playoff would be uh, something that would save the committee from uh, having to make some hard choices. But then again, we have to argue about the 12th best team in the country, which is something I'm not looking forward to no. next season. But this does feel like you know a, a year when that would be great. However, I will say... It tends to work itself out, right? Like Florida State might go undefeated, but maybe Washington loses. Maybe Texas loses this weekend. If Georgia beats Alabama, then it all works itself out, right? You have the Big Ten champion. You have Florida State. You have Georgia, and maybe you have Oregon, or you have you know someone else who rises up there. Washington beats Oregon, and Washington is in. Like it, it, it could work itself out as early as this weekend with Texas losing to Iowa State, and that takes one team. Is that a pick? Off the question. Is that a pick? You taking the points at Jack Trice? I'm taking the points. I don't know if they're going to win the game outright, but I, I like the points. That Brooks State. injury could be huge. I mean, it, it, the freshman the freshman is stud, but for the Brooks injury, I think is huge. We just haven't had chaos yet, and this is not that big of a chaos because I think a lot of people are predicting te Texas to lose. But it has to happen at some point, right? There has to be a weekend when all heck breaks. You know, it's just like it's crazy, and maybe it's this weekend with Washington losing, with Texas losing. Maybe someone up top has a much tougher game than we think. But it, there there must be a weekend at some point, right? When when we have some chaos. Will, you think there's going to be any chaos this weekend in over names? I, I root for my bets first and foremost, but second, I root for chaos. I want these guys to squirm. I want people pointing fingers, screaming, getting mad. So hopefully <laughs> it doesn't work itself out. Hopefully it, it, it just doesn't uh, come to a situation where the, it's a clear cut four teams. I want a little controversy. I want a little back and forth. So I hope there's some chaos. Uh, I would take the points this weekend, but you know, you alluded to it earlier. We haven't had that. Oh my God. Upset that monster upset that that throws a monkey wrench into all this. You got to feel like it's coming. I mean, we can't get through the whole season without that big upset. So uh, who knows when it's coming, where it's coming, but it, it's got to come at some point, I would think, right? I hope so. I'm looking at the, the odds. Odd. How's this for chaos, Go. Bear? I'm going to take three with Illinois against Iowa. That's personal oh. help. I'm going to have am three too. points with Illinois. Oh, my God. I hate myself Bear, already. Bear On two. Thursday, I hate myself. <laughs> I hate myself. Well, you know Brian Ferentz has something special cooked up for his final game at Kinnick, right? <laughs> don't feel bad Sandy. Okay. i hate you too I, I, the, 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 okay I, very quickly i watched last week in arizona state go into the rose bowl and run 18 snaps i count them 18 snaps of of a swinging gate they had multiple other snaps with a tight end at, at quarterback they're running back through a touchdown pass like a 25 Scatabo. legit like double post touchdown pass he threw another pass later that was dropped that was brilliant if Arizona State can piece together an offense with five scholarship offensive alignment healthy, with no quarterback, why can't Iowa do anything remotely close to an offense? It frustrates me to no end that you cannot design an offense in 2023 with any sort of success when you're Iowa. I said it doesn't look like they practice offense. Like, like it truly doesn't. It, like, but like it just to me, this is a general. It's coaching malpractice to not have something creative on offense in twenty twenty three. There's all different people. Not if you're the coach's it, son. I, I guess so. But like, why, why was why does Kurt Ferentz allow this type of offense to be present at Iowa? It, it makes no sense to me. It really doesn't. I mean, it's a long way from where where they were within the in the eighties with Chuck Long and even Brad Banks and the. They beat the, USC in the Holiday Bowl five years ago, like forty nine twenty one. Like they, yeah. they used to have an offense. Yep. <laughs> now, and, and, and you, you, you get back to the playoff deal here. Like you look at the prices, like to make make miss, and it, it's pretty. It's kind of clear how the commit how, how the odds makers at least least think this is going to shake. Like Texas, the no to make the playoff is minus two ninety. So wow. they think Texas is going to be like the odd team out. Uh, like like if you get I like got Oregon, Oregon is minus one sixty five to make it. Uh, Washington, the no is minus one seventy five. Florida State. 
The yes is minus 280. Uh, Georgia, the yes is minus 240. Michigan, the yes is minus 240. Uh, Alabama, the no is minus 195. So it's like, I think they kind of feel we're going to, we're going to get Michigan, Georgia, Oregon, and Florida state. And, and Texas would be the, uh, the odd team out of 12 to one. Sammy, what's the number for Georgia, Alabama in two weeks? Georgia, well, Circa opened at three last week, or maybe it was maybe it was on okay. Monday they opened it. Yeah, it was Monday. Circa opened Georgia three, and it got bet to four. I don't know the current number because I haven't checked in a couple of days, but saw four Circa yesterday. Did, Circa did open at three. Georgia three. What, it, so isn't Georgia to make the playoffs at minus two forty super high? Because if they lose this game to Alabama, there's no guarantee that they get in the playoffs. I don't think they do get in the playoffs if they, if they lose to Alabama. What's I, the, I really the, don't. The no feels like a like that. That's a pretty high. That's a pretty e, high yes. Even 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 though, even though I even though numbers. I will say like the, the 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 wins against Ole Miss and Missouri, two teams I think the committee has in the top twelve right yeah, now. That's good, but but again, with so many other options out there, including a conference, I don't I don't know. I I, I think the I think Georgia has to win the SEC to, to to get in. So we'll see. What, what, what else? What else we got on the, uh, the 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 slate this week? We got um, Kansas Kansas State. I think is an interesting. He was say. I think we're we're all kind of like you don't want to wait too long. We don't think Jason Bean is going to play, but and Kansas State has absolutely drilled them. I think what we got, we got eight 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 and a halfs out there. I hate betting against Lance Leipold, but you kind of got to lay the eight with the Wildcats here, don't you, Sammy? Yeah, we've all been talking about this in the real group chat. This is the fake group chat, uh, of course. Uh, <laughs> the real group chat has basically had Bean out all week, and and I got a text on Sunday that he was not in good shape. And and Lance is is never one to like pull punches, you know. That will come out maybe Friday or uh, early Saturday morning. The status of Bean. Um, I'm going to say right now, I don't think he's going to play. That number sort of been batted around. I mean, we saw it open eight, got bet down to seven. Then there were some rumblings about Bean potentially not playing. But look, I say it's 70-30 that we're going to see Cole Ballard, uh, who's quarterback three at Kansas. And miss me with the Jalen Daniels might play. I would be stunned if we see Jalen Daniels under center. Like, I just, I don't think that's going to happen, guys. At this point in time, there's a lot of stuff going on there with him. Um, and Bean got his bell rung really badly. So it doesn't look good for him. And and I, I do think, to uh, to your point, Bear, if we do see Ballard and it comes out, it gets public, this thing could run to 10. I mean, easily. Could easily run to 10. Yeah, Daniels has got shot. a legit back issue as well. Go ahead, Will. I mean, just with a head injury in, in 2023, I'd be shocked if this kid's playing six, seven days later. And like Sammy said, it's one thing to lose your quarterback. It's another to lose your quarterback. Then you're back up. I think this kid's a freshman walk on. So uh, I hate, like you said, I hate laying points with Leipold. I hate laying points to him, especially in a rivalry game. But to me, this is one where Kansas State just marches the ball up and down the field. This one could get out of hand. I think that eight is a little cheap if uh, if Bean is indeed out. Are we fading UCLA this weekend? Uh, and with a program that might not have their coach that has no quarterbacks that just got beat by Arizona State. I know USC is not great, and they're favored by six and a half, but USC still plays hard. I, is UCLA going to give anything this weekend, guys? Not laying points with that defense. I'm not sure. I'm not laying points with that defense. I can't. It's the most volatile I, game I, I, for me at quarterback. I, I, I honestly have so many scenarios. <laughs> you guys know I have this list of, quarterbacks and injuries and all <laughs> yes this. you do yes. this, this week's list has 26 guys on it and three of them are at ucla i have garbers on there with an ankle i have schley on there who left the last game in the fourth quarter like crying getting you know walked off the field and then there are rumors now that dante moore is either going to transfer or redshirt so if, if garbers plays that's like quarterback one two but if garbers doesn't go they might be on quarterback four so I just, I don't know what to do. This is the most perplexed I've been all season because I literally don't know who's going to play quarterback. And I don't think the Bruins know either. No, I, I don't think they do either. Um, any, uh, Will, I guess I'll start with you. Any other college thoughts that you've, you've got that we haven't uh, discussed yet? I know usually you Aren't got something just... pretty, pretty good off the board. Nice, nice, and, nice and ugly like uh, Sammy and I do with Illinois. 
I think we're all just we're doing it wrong. We're wasting our time. Can't we just take the points anytime teams from the Big Ten West play each other? Because none of these teams is favorites cover. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to go back to another Big Ten game. Michigan State's getting four. There's some three and a half. There's some fours against Indiana. That's just a lot of points to cover at a Big Ten game. I'll take the four with Michigan State. I took Army plus four against a Coastal Carolina team that got gave up 200 yards rushing last week. Army at four get, uh, at home getting four. So those are a couple ones uh, off the radar that I like and. Houston getting seven. Look, this Oak State team, we knew they'd be flat last week, and, and boy, were they flat. Uh, I, I don't like Oof. that Oak State team late seven. Houston uh, is good as a dog. Horse is good as a dog. So those are a couple of uh, ugly dogs. I don't know if you want to get frisky and round robin them, but those are the three I'm looking at. I like it. I get behind, get behind Dana's team getting seven there at home. I can, I, I, I can see that. I'm excited, guys, to wake up Saturday morning to our Colorado under five and a half cashing as a group. They play Friday night. They're in the Palouse. Uh, Washington State was 4-0 after four weeks. Colorado was 3-1, and and combined they've won a single game between the two of them. And that was that was, uh, that was was Colorado by three points over Arizona State. Ugly game. I'm not staying up to watch it, guys, but Saturday morning we can wake up to some money in our accounts with that Colorado under five and a half hitting. And how about the people that took to Colorado it. over three and a half? I mean, you're you're gonna barely get there, assuming yeah. they don't win another game. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's kind of comical how that how that happened, how that played out. Like you're lucky that whole thing with Colorado State at two o'clock in the morning on the East Coast that in Norvell not going for it. You're lucky it played out the way it did. TCU as well. Hey, look, we had some 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 listener and viewer feedback. They want they they, they say, and I actually feel like an idiot for not thinking of it sooner and. It'd be gone. I am an idiot, but but not for for that. But big one Thursday night in the NFL. Like I said, can you sneak in the Thursday night NFL game on the back end of the college pod? So here we are, gambling group chat. We're going to talk NFL here. Massive one Thursday night. Bengals off that loss at home again to, to, to Houston. Ravens off that improbable home blow in that game uh, against the Browns. Bengals. I mean. You t- the epitome of must win here. Like you'll, you would be zero two against the Ravens if you lose tonight. Division record would be bad. Like this is kind of a must situation here tonight for for the Bengals, isn't it, Sammy? It is. I like the over in the game uh, up to like forty seven. I think I would play it. You know, you can get a forty six right now. This open forty four. I, I think both of these offenses clearly can hum. We know Cincinnati playing from behind, if that is the case. And I think, you know, Baltimore is going to take a lead in this game early. Cincinnati's good at playing catch up. I mean, we saw last week what the Bengals and the Texans did. I feel like as long as you get that horse to set the pace early and it's not seven to seven at half, you should be fine. We're going to get a lot of points in this game. And I know, you know, you read Twitter, you know, the primetime unders are almost locks. That's what I've been, that's what I've been wow. told. Really? Yeah. I, you got yeah, to tell go me over. about this. Yeah, I don't know if you've seen that trend that primetime unders are like 77% or something like that. Uh, it's foolproof uh, to some, but I'm going to go over. <laughs> I mean, it was, a, it was a lock on Monday night with that, with that Bills game where you had all, all, the, all the, the missed PATs and those field goals. I mean, clearly the uh, under 47 was a, was a lock there for under 46 and a half, and it came in at 46. I mean, that was clear. Mm-hmm. clearly you had it all the way. Mm-hmm. Will, you like anything tonight in this game? Once again, Sammy's copying off my homework. I like the over. I, I thought I was going to be a little contrarian here and, and ha- be the only one with the over. Uh, if you look at Cincy, it's amazing. They're second to, to last in the league in yards per play allowed. They've allowed 6.1 yards per play on defense. They gave up seven and a half yards per play to the Texans, which that's a staggering number for the NFL. That's like, you know, Bama versus Mercer in college. That's a, that's a huge number. Uh, I think they'll move the ball. Uh, I wrote my pick for Fox Sports, foxsports.com. Go check it out. We, we do all our primetime picks. I gave out Bengals plus three and a half. It was hard because there's so much injury uncertainty with Hendricks and Higgins, uh, Humphreys out. Um, I, I lean towards the Bengals just plus Stanley. three and a half because, yeah, yeah, Stanley is another one. Burrow is 15 and two as a dog of three or more. I'm not a huge trend guy, but that's one that, that really sticks out. Uh, I think we'll get some points. To me, this is like a 27 24 type of game. I like the over and I lead towards the Bengals. And I do think the Ravens, uh, look, if they win this game tonight, that division, you don't want to say it's over because Pittsburgh's got yes. this voodoo magic, but this is almost a division clinching game for the, the Ravens here because they're probably going to get to 11, 12 wins. If you look at their win total, 11 and a half, 
Pittsburgh doesn't have the upside to get to 11 or 12. The Browns without Watson don't have the upside to get to 11 or 12. And since he would be in such a bad tiebreaker scenario, they'd be eliminated from the division pretty much four games out. So if the Ravens win there and, and going to be like minus three, minus 400 to win this division. So that might be another way to play it too. But I like over lean Bengals. I think the Bengals live is an interesting option because the Ravens three losses this year, they've been uh, like a near a hundred percent win percentage probability in the fourth quarter in all those games and lost uh, the three times. So maybe there's a chance to do that. Also guys, I will say though, our favorite fate is going to take Bengals plus three and a half. I'm going to throw that out there right now. We we know what's going to happen there. So if, if you're on the Bengals bear will like it just FYI, it, it's going to happen. And I'm going to have to take the Ravens. Who would that be? Is that the so? bartender or is that somebody else? It's someone else. And it's gonna. I'm, I will be on Ravens minus three and a half for that exact reason tonight. When that when that uh, tweet comes out from a person that I just, if I don't have a play in a game and I see this person tweet, I just take the other side. It's gonna. So I will have a Ravens plus three and a half for a small, just for that exact reason. I, I think. I think the way to play this based on the on the money line and, and the price. Like, I think what Will alluded to with the division. Like, if you like, if you like the Ravens. Just lay the 115 or whatever they are to win the division because, like I said, you got the Steelers who can't keep this up. You got the Browns. You mean, you mean nine straight weeks of being of being outgained and being six yeah, and three? The, 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 the missed PD, the yeah. missed PAD, PAT, <laughs> Voodoo Magic Doll. Um, you, they got that going too, and then you got the Browns who probably are not going to win that many games, and, and the Bengals will be eliminated. So if you like the Ravens tonight, I do would just lay lay, lay the, the the money line. Price on the uh, on the Ravens win the division, but if you like the Bengals, they think you can have to get the Bengals around four four and a half to one to win that division, and you, and you look that would, that would make them six and four. Uh, the Ravens' schedule is a little bit more difficult. They, 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 the tiebreakers are into play. You kind of throw the Ravens, I mean the the Browns and the Steelers out, and uh, winning that division makes a makes a little bit of sense there for for the, for Cincinnati. So massive game tonight. Um, well, we got to talk a little NFL. Sammy, Will, until next week, we'll uh, hope that we have a bunch of winners this week. And maybe, uh, maybe uh, Will, your, uh, your USC to score first for, uh, bet can uh, get home this week. That was an ugly loss on, uh, on Saturday night for us. As was Buffalo last night, but we, we move on. Take care, guys. I just realized we didn't get Sammy's uh, Ivy League play of the week. You're right. Week. We didn't. We'll have, we'll have, to, we'll have, have to, to find it. Find that in the in the actual real group chat. We'll have to, we'll have to put it out there for we'll the people. I mean, his uh, his FCS play of the week. Yeah, I don't yeah. think it got there last week, did it? I think it was seven to three in the fourth quarter. I don't yeah, think that that would probably mean it didn't. Yeah, I don't think they overhit that one. Like, let's recap your wager so far before we get to our best bets. You have uh, FAU plus nine and a half. You have Arizona State plus 24. Washington on the road, plus two and a half. You have Illinois plus three. Temple plus seven and a half. And Wisconsin minus four and a half. I think I got that one right this time, Bear. I think, I think you we, did. I think, well, I was able to read. I was able you, to read. You learned. Exactly. I learned. Uh, all right. Best bets. We were we both hit ours uh, with, fair, with fair ease last week. You had UCF and they... One yeah. by a thousand. I had the under in the Rose Bowl. Yeah. Where are you, uh, where are you going? Probably could have played eight quarters in the Rose Bowl. Oh, no chance of getting a 45. No chance no. would have got there. And no. I think they probably could have played eight quarters in Orlando and wouldn't Oklahoma matter. State wouldn't have yeah. come back. I lay 24 and a half with Notre Dame against Wake Forest. I mean, the, the, the Deeks are just offensively challenged. And outside of the loss to Ohio State, you look at what Notre Dame has done this year at home. They went by 53, 24, 28, and 51. I mean, they had a brutal, the gross performance at Clemson a couple of weeks ago. Looks classic, like terrible game, idle week, home, final home game, let out your frustration against a terrible team, yes. Hartman against his former team. Like, I, I just, I mean, Wake Forest has scored 21. It's, it's as high uh, against an ACC opponent this year. Stop so, and, great. and I think that was in that pit game where they, destroyed yeah. Sammy P took took Sammy P stole soul that's what it that's what it took for uh, Wake to get to 21 against uh, someone good bad. so like I would be stunned if they yeah. came close to that here they, they, this this feels like a like that Notre Dame pit game a couple weeks ago I think it was like 58 7 or whatever 51 7 whatever it might have been yeah just to, like, like it, 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 this feels yeah like a uh, like a Agreed. get right type of game, so I laid the twenty four and a half with the Irish. I, I'm with you there. I like that one. Uh, I'm going back to the Pac-12 as I normally do. That's what we like, I have the over 
in Utah, Arizona. It's an early Pac-12 game, uh, but it's over uh, 44 and a half here. This number feels shockingly low, Bear. Um, Utah was to the under in their first five games. Since their bye week, they've been to the over in three or four games. And the one that did not hit was one score away. It was the Oregon 35-6 to six game, and that barely went under there. Uh, they're scoring more points, even though offensively they're still a, a little bit challenged at quarterback. Um, on the flip side, Arizona... Scores a bunch of points, too. They have a great offense, great wide receivers. They, they have things that they can do offensively with their offensive line and with their wide receivers that Utah has trouble defending. Worth noting, Arizona is 107th in the country and allowing pass plays of 20-plus yards or more. Utah is 70th in the country, allowing pass plays of 20-plus 20, 20 yards or more. Uh, this number just feels shockingly so, low to so me. You're, so you're expecting a few big scoring plays in this game? Yeah, I just, I mean, th this game, I mean, at, at 27, I'm, I'm, correct me if my math is wrong, 27 24 is an it's over, 51. correct? It's yeah, it's 51. Yeah, like that feels very attainable in this game. I, I don't see this game being 2017, 21. I, I just, no. I think this game is going over. Uh, Utah can score, has not been adjusted uh, for their, their relative better success the last four weeks. And we know Arizona can put up a, a bunch of points as well. So I have over here, uh, Utah fighting for pride, obviously, in this game. They're not going to be a Pacto Championship game in Arizona. Arizona can win. 10 games this season. Yeah. With with uh, with the continued they they play uh they, they play Utah at home and they play the Sun Devils and they might have a bowl game to get to 10 wins. And it's a, it, it, they've been a, they've been a great story. It's amazing. This is the first time since 2017 uh that they have been favored over a ranked team and first time since 2014 they've been favored in a ranked matchup. So uh Jed Fish and his staff have done a uh, a great job. We'll see if they can keep it going next year when they move into the uh into the Big 12. I wonder if Jed, I mean, Jed Fishing. Will, will he be there? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the question. Someone's going to be at UCLA, either him or Jonathan Smith, I feel like. We'll, we'll find that's, out in a couple of weeks. They're, they're tight. Well, he, he was he at USC, right? He was at USC. No, Jed Fish was at UCLA. Was it UCLA? Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's, if, that's if the news is accurate about Chip getting fired. Yes. Which I, which I would, it sounds like there's a lot of, smoke there and i think people ask sometimes like why would that report be out and the reason why the report is out is to let candidates know the job is coming open because Correct. you do not want to miss on the coaching carousel the co right. they, 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 nothing that really happened to AM fire jimbo then we saw a plethora of things mm -hmm. getting, even like brady hoker went out to retirement and diavolos and, and and zach arnett like the firings are happening now people are calling behind the scenes trying to figure out who their next coach is going to be they're building coaching staffs it goes beyond just the head coach. You have to build a coaching staff right. out. And UCLA is letting everyone know our job will be open in two weeks. Hey, Jonathan Smith, don't take the Michigan State job. Come to UCLA. Right. And so this is why the news sort of get, I mean, Mississippi State was out for weeks. And, basically, that, and, right? that, and I think, I think the, was, the thing with Mississippi State is that I think they're trying to connect some dots to Arnett maybe joining Lincoln at SC to that, be his defensive That, that has been thoughts as well, right? Yeah, so we know Arnett was with Mike Leach, and that makes sense to, to, to know that kind of how tough mm -hmm. it is to, to be right. a coordinator, to coordinator on an air raid offense. So that's a, that's it for our picks this week. Yeah, we, we did it. We did. Okay. Last week. Finally. Thank, thank goodness. Um, it's been a, been a, been a rough, it was my year. best pack to over week too. It was, yeah. it took, took a little bit. I took some, took some ugly, took some ugly sides last week. Well, then that's why you do well. U ugly sides. Ugly sides are usually the way Stanford to go. plus like, six and a half in the big game. Yeah. I thought, I thought about that. <laughs> that that's a, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cal, Cal, Cal is not in a, uh, a good situation, no. but, um, yeah, a lot, lot, lot of plays there. Hopefully, Game of the Goo Chat kicked a lot of stuff around there as well for the playoff. Thanks again for everybody for chiming in. And we were saying we did, we did get, did get your NFL Thursday night pick in there as well. So we, we do what we do listen, we do read the tweets, we do uh, pay attention and try to make everybody happy. Appreciate the feedback, rate, review, subscribe, download, watch us on the YouTube channel wherever you get your podcasts. For Sammy P, for Will, for Jeff. I'm Bear. Bless you bet. More you lose when you win. <laughs>